Hi, and welcome to another video using the St. Joseph Lightboard. And as you can tell, we are going to be dealing with everyone's favorite topic, fractions. And fraction seems to be one of these topics that we talk about in math and one of these concepts that we discuss in math that kids really get their backs up about. So we're going to try and slow things down. And we're going to try and talk a little bit about fractions and being able to compare and order them today and normally we only focus on one strategy but today we're going to focus on two and there's a reason we're going to focus on two separate strategies while we're working on this today so the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to look at comparing some fractions today and putting them in order from least to greatest so if you take a look here we've got three quarters and we're comparing it to seven eighths and five sixteenths now the first strategy that we are going to look at is probably the fastest way to go about doing it, but it becomes less effective when we are working with fractions and that, that strategy is simply changing these into decimals and comparing. So let's do that. We know that if we take a fraction and we divide the top number by the bottom, we'll get a decimal number and fractions can be decimals, they can be percents, they can be ratios. So let's work with just the decimals right now. So if we take three and we divide it by four, or let's say you score three out of four on some type of assessment, you get decimal seven five or 75%. And then if we take the top number here and divide it by eight, we're going to get decimal eight seven five. Now, looking at these two fractions, you can say, okay, well, wait a second. If we take 3 and divide it by 4, we get 75%. We take 7 and divide it by 8, we get decimal 875 or 87.5%. You can make the comparison really quickly and say, oh, well, we know 7 eighths is larger than 3 quarters. And let's continue doing this strategy and seeing what 5 sixteenths is going to equal. So if we have 5 sixteenths and we divide 5 by 16, we get decimal 3, 1, Two five decimal three one two five or thirty one point two five percent. So now, if we wanted to order these fractions, we can do so from least to greatest. We know that least, our smallest fraction, is five sixteenths. Our next smallest fraction would be three quarters, and then our largest fraction, of course, would be seven eighths. Now, this is one strategy, and it works really, really effectively if we are trying to work for speed. But where it falls apart is when we get into something like adding fractions or subtracting fractions. What we want to do is a separate strategy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to rewrite this in, uh, let's go yellow here. We're going to do this as uh, 3 quarters, 7 eighths, and then 5 sixteenths. Now, strategy number two is quite a bit different. And we are going to try to get common denominators or the same size pieces. And sometimes it's easier to do than others, and sometimes you got to really work at it. And in this case, if we take a look at these bottom numbers, these denominators all have something in common. If I take 4 and multiply it by 4, I get sixteenths. So I can actually change the quarters and cut them into smaller pieces and get sixteenths. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm going to change this fraction into what we call an equivalent fraction. So 3 times 4 is 12, and then we're looking at 4 times 4, which is 16. And now I can compare 12 sixteenths very easily to 5 sixteenths over here. I see that I have more pieces out of 16 than I did over here, so this one must be larger. And if we do the same thing over here, what we have is we have 7 eighths. So what can I multiply 8 by in order to equal 16 and get another common denominator? Well, if I multiply 8 by 2, 8 times 2, or 8 groups of 2, is 16. And I'm going to do the same thing from the bottom to the top. So uh, 7 times 2 here is 14 out of 16. And then I can just bring this down because I didn't really do anything with it. And I end up with 5 16 Now I can compare these significantly easier because I can see that 5 16 I have less pieces here than I did if I compared it to this guy, 7 8 So now putting them in an order from least to greatest would be much easier. 5 16 followed by 3 quarters, followed by 7 8 And that was the same over here when we did this strategy. Now let's talk about why we would want to use this strategy instead. Okay? Let's say we're moving into addition. If we're moving into addition, it becomes very difficult to change this back into a fraction 
once you've done it. It's not impossible, but it becomes very difficult to do. So the concept that I want you guys to think about is trying to change into a common denominator wherever you can. And that's going to help you kind of get into the mindset that you can simply just create equivalent fractions and be able to compare top numbers and then order your uh, fractions the way that you need to. Uh, if you have any comments or any questions or anything like that, please leave them below. And thanks again.